Ladies and gentlemen, Tyler, a saving vice yeah, in the building. Hell yeah. What's up, buddy? How are you doing? I am doing fantastic. Thank you for doing this, man. We appreciate it. Uh, for those that may not know who you are, sir, could you please properly introduce yourself? Let us know where in the world you are right now and plug or promote anything you'd like. Uh, well, I'm uh, Tyler. I, I'm Tyler Small, if you want my last name. Uh, it's not important, but uh, I sing. I'm 50% of the vocals for the band Saving Vice. We are from Vermont. We are a metalcore band, but we have rap, pop, all sorts of stuff kind of mixed in there. So if you're, if you're kind of into anything, I would suggest checking us out. Um, you can hit us up, Saving Vice, Instagram, Twitter. It's the same title everywhere you go. Uh, we're super happy to be represented on this. Uh, I like your backdrop. <laughs> Oh hell yeah! So this is this if if you if you'd like you can totally bust out a bong joint whatever smoke with me drink drink a beer with me if you have hot sauce feel free to grab the hot sauce too I'll explain later what was it like hanging out with the Dropout Kings? Well, I mean we had uh, been on tour with them last October, so it was um, I would say it was pretty pretty like pretty much the usual from what we've come to expect minus us all passively dealing with all of the you know what yeah bullshit that was going on mm -hmm. you know which we're almost like i feel like we're all just tired of speaking into existence but you know you know who i'm talking about oh i know exactly what you're talking about we won't bring we won't bring up his name but um dude so <laughs> when when your guys tour van broke down it seemed like everyone that's of even remotely a fan of yours was just like guys we gotta help him we gotta help it it was just like an overwhelming amount of support how did, how did that feel um that that was like i mean you know every time we've been in a weird situation where i was like how did we get this lucky you know what i mean i've kind of we've kind of we used to always call it sv magic because we'd get in these weird situations or like a weird person would be walking into the room as we were playing who was someone's manager who talked to someone you know what i mean like weird yeah. shit and then we were we got on warp tour because of someone who knows someone who sent a video to someone and we've kind of come to just accept all of the horrible shit that happens kind of just waiting for the good stuff to come back around and like when all of that was happening we were just like this must be the good stuff, you know what I mean? Like, people kind of all coming together and, like, helping us out. And uh, I think it was even bigger. It was bigger than us, though, you know? It wasn't just us. It was Dropout Kings. But I think it was, as a whole, just, like, the disconnect from how some people in the industry look at and treat touring and touring artists versus, versus how other genres or people might think about it and, like... It was like all the the underground, if you want to call it the underground, quote unquote, all understood how fucked up that was when it happened, because they were all like, "Bro, if that was me, we'd be fucked." And I think that was why so many people kind of came to. I mean, know, even even party. Ronnie, even Ronnie hit you guys with a donation, like so it reached yeah, like that was weird as fuck. Yeah, we uh, I I think it was Adam from Dropout hit us up. He's like, "Yo." Like, I need your PayPal. Ronnie Radke wants to send you guys money to help out with gas. And we're like, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? That was it's crazy. Was it. Yeah, it was just, it was like this nonstop manic, stressed out episode. And then we'd have like news like that. We'd be like, oh, Ronnie Radke just sent us like money to help us out. And it's like, that's really sick. Oh, we're stuck here for another week. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was just it's not like enough. <laughs> up back and forth. It was just like good news, horrible wait, wait, news, wait, wait, good wait, news, wait, bad wait, news. This? Just I, I felt like I was just like tied to two cars that were driving in the opposite direction. <laughs> like I don't Dang, know. That's, that that's wild. Let's jam yeah. some of your guys, some of your music. Not everybody watching has heard your band before. What is White Rabbit about? So White Rabbit is, I mean. So, like, the white rabbit is kind of a character who's a metaphor for what the song's about, but essentially, you know, in the story of, like, Alice in Wonderland, 
the white rabbit kind of like leads her down the the path right she follows it not really realizing until it's too late so in this context the white rabbit is basically like temptation so it's like the rabbit hole is just all of your shit whether you're trying to get away from or trying to stop doing or bad habits or addictions or whatever it is when you start to recognize signs or temptations that are in front of you that are going to lead you back down to bad habits it's basically like about succumbing or not succumbing to that cool. as a whole so in the music video the character obviously does succumb and ends up kind of literally wrapped up in her arms and legs at the end like trapped pretty much you know because he gives in and it's easy to see why he might that's the whole point of the video it's like you know it's like sometimes the you can see all you can see the forest for the trees and then people just still get like tempted by their worst nature it's it's uh i feel like it's something that anybody can relate to Oh, yeah, I got you. Um, after we play this, I want to talk about your your uh, your clothing line, Born Dead Clothing. So think about that for a second. We'll be right back. White Rabbit, though. I got to hear it. Hell yeah. I'll let the video keep playing in the background, but I'm going to mute it. But tell me about Born Dead Clothing. Where can everybody go to buy something? Why, why did you create well, it? So so I think there was a, a, mis a miscommunication there. So Born Dead Clothing is actually a brand that we are endorsed by. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yes. So I have a I have a clothing line called Reunion, and then Chase also has a clothing line called Low Point. So we each have our own clothing lines, but Born Dead was actually just um. So do Vinny, they do they create the clothes that you guys come up with? No, no, no. They, we've actually um. They we've actually just worn some of their stuff because they've kind of supported us since we first met them. So when we first were shooting our first music video for our song Exhale. We actually met Vinny, who's the actor that you saw in the White Rabbit video. He was also um, in our video for Hell Here and Echoes from the Gutter. <laughs> My TV just decided to turn itself on. That was weird. Um, so, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> that Vinny is weird. Was, yeah, he Poltergeist was in, in the room or something. I don't know. That's crazy. Yeah, I was watching Ghost earlier, so. Uh, anyway, but um. Wait, wait, yeah, Demi, they, Demi Moore, Ghost. Oh yeah. Hell yeah, good call, dude. Give me a good hell good yeah. <laughs> shout out, uh, shout out, my man Patrick Swayze. Yeah, like R.I.P. He's a good man, but. Yeah. Yeah, but Vinny, the owner of Born Dead, he's been a an actor in a bunch of our videos, and he's kind of supported us since he first started and. His brand's doing really good. Like he funded the, he kind of supported and sponsored the whole tour. That was why it was the Born Dead tour. And um, and obviously, I have my own clothing line. I just dropped, and Chase has his. But Born Dead was kind of like their family, you know. Like we've always repped their stuff. I mean, we've had, we've had, uh, you know, we played we played Warp Tour when they were on Warp Tour, and we all wore Born Dead on stage. We got to play the. The Born Dead stage when they were um, sponsoring an I Matter festival, you know it's it's been cool to meet so many people in our careers where it's like we got to meet people right when they were at the early stage like we were and we got to come up together and watch them blow up as we kind of made our success in their own ways and see how it's like formed connections like other people we know now work with other people we know. So it's, cool. It's, it's, it's awesome. You know, the music industry, if you're, if you're, if you're a cool cat and you know, you guys are somewhat decent musicians, then, uh, they, we all tend to support each other. You know, it's, it's a big family. It's like a big family yeah, it's, thing. It's, it's, it's way easier to lift someone up than step on them. You know, true. Uh, before we play dying to watch, which is the second song I was going to play. Um, I want to do some trivia with you. And then after this, if you're down, maybe we'll review a couple bands together. But uh, regarding mm -hmm. trivia, what do you know the most about? And I'm talking either in film or TV. A any Netflix show, TV show, Simpsons, Breaking Bad, Dexter, Star Wars, Harry Potter. What do you know the most about? Or if I ask you a question about this film or TV show, you will not be stumped. Uh, if I would say it's either... It'd be either like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Star Wars, or like Dragon Ball Z. Okay, I, get, I got some Star Wars stuff. But these Star Wars ones are really hard. Is there a specific Star Wars movie that you've seen more than the others? 
Because I'll ask him something uh, from that movie. I, I've seen I've seen a lot of them a lot of times. Like, and honestly, every time I watch them, I still find new shit that stuck by me. So that's that'll probably be the most challenging. But okay. I'm I'm down for it. Okay, let's play Dying to Watch and give me a second to find a question real quick. Oh yeah. Freaking badass, dude, for real. I saw your face at that part. I know exactly what part you're, you made that face at, too. It's that, it's that, mmm, mmm, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's, mm, I like that, mmm. All right, I think I'm going to stump you here, but we'll see if we can. Regarding Return of the Jedi, okay. there's a part where Jabba, Jabba and the bounty hunter are discussing how much to settle a bounty for Chewbacca. What is the amount that they decide the bounty should be to settle the bounty for on Chewbacca? Oh, fuck. It's got a couple zeros attached to it, so it's a big amount. 3,000? It is more than that. I'll give you a second guess, and it's a lot more than that. You're, you're club. You got a three. There's uh. a three in it. I think we're gonna get him. Three million. That is incorrect. <laughs> that is incorrect. The answer is thirty-five thousand. No big deal. Let's spin the wheel and see what it lands on. Uh, oh, damn it! Unless you don't have your your other arm tattooed like very much at all, is there a reason, or are you just planning out the next sleeve? Uh, it's because I just honestly felt like I'd have way better ideas if I gave myself 10 years. And so I saved an arm for when I was smarter. <laughs> for sure. Hell yeah. yeah. That's literally what it is. Yeah. <laughs> it landed on hot sauce. You don't have to do it, but you can if you'd like. That's why I mentioned hot okay. sauce earlier. If you have any hot sauce, I think because we stumped you, you've earned a quick swig. Don't worry. You don't have to do it, but if you'd like. Oh, yeah. Hang on. Okay, I'll, cool. I'll, cool. I'll do it with I'll, you. I'll do it with you. I'll imbibe. Hang on. <laughs> awesome. We'll give him a second to uh, get that set up. I'm going to jam another Saving Vice track. Let's see. Let's do an oldie. Let's do Broken Window. Now, he doesn't have to do that. It's so cool that sometimes our guests are like, you know what? I'll do it. I gotta be honest, it's pretty basic. I just have like Frank's Red Hots, but that's what's here. But hey, I was just it works. I just I just got back from tour, so there's not much in the fridge. So. Oh yeah, well cheers, my friend. This is a cayenne pepper hot sauce I have in my hand. We're gonna jam Broken Window, and then I'll ask uh, another couple more questions. Maybe we'll review a band or two, and then uh, we'll call it a day. Hey, sounds good to me, buddy. Let's do it. Let's go. Cheers. How did the how did all the um, collabs with Tom and Patient sixty seven come about? Uh, that was just like we're just homies and we were like, hey, this would be kind of fun. That was, that's really all it was. Cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Have you guys yeah, ever kinda... have you guys ever met in person or or I don't know if you've been to Australia or no, not? But we we no never. We just um, I think we're just like minded individuals. We're both like DIY musicians who've had to like kind of beat the odds just figuring it out on our own and like we've traded a lot of tips back and forth with them you know like they have helped us with understanding spotify stuff and we have helped them with you know other things and obviously that collaboration was great because it put their band in front of our entire spotify fan base and ours in front of theirs so it was you know mutually beneficial and it's too and like it's hard for both bands of different reasons you know like australia there's only so many places you can tour and it's so much more contained and like, you know, even with what we were dealing like with COVID, you got an even smaller base of area that's even shut off. So it's like, you know, it kind of, it, it related to us because we're, you know, we were like that Vermont band. We're trying to like reach out into the broader spectrum of like the music scene. And I can kind of understand how isolation kind of feels. So I can, I realize it's probably pretty rough not being able to tour outside of Australia, you know, and still trying to make a name for yourself. They'll get they'll get over here sooner or later. They're 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 growing each month like a lot, and he's he's really really good at social media, so they'll be fine. He's a good dude. Yeah, hell yeah! Shout out to Tom. Um, I do want to play a band or two for you. Let let me know what you think of them. I'm gonna find another question. You damn near like did a massive chug of that Frank's hot. I'm really really impressed by that one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thanks for I'll being a good sport, dude. Uh, oh yeah, if I if I lose again, I'll do another one. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, when you, when you're on tour. 
what is the go-to munchie snack? Oh, munchie. I mean, see, it's like weird because when I'm on tour, it's like usually when I'm trying harder to take care of myself because of everything I'm putting my body through every day. Right. You know, and um, I'm, I'm pretty big on just like if I can find like a really good like I found this band. Uh, I think this brand was called Dots, Dotties or Dots. But I'm like really big on like pretzels, like if like honey mustard pretzels are huge for me, and I found this really good brand of those, and those are dope because I don't feel like quite as gross as if I'm eating like bags of potato chips, but they kind of hit the spot for me. So I'm pretty big on like the pretzel sticks. Otherwise, I'd say sour gummy worms. There you go. I like yeah. I like extra extra sour stuff. It's more sour the better. Like the mm -hmm. warheads and all that stuff, but uh, tell oh, me what yeah. you think. Tell me what you think of this artist. This is an artist from New York called Burn Like Stars. What do you think, Burn Like Stars, featuring Christian Roach? I gotta be honest. Like I was actually pretty into the melodies. Like I thought the the vocal like structure and the singing. Like I I was pretty into it. I mean, I would have liked to have heard it on a little bigger of a scale production wise but i felt like there was actually a lot of potential there it if, was actually kind of sweet if someone wanted to reach out and and get you on a track for a feature what would be the best way to go about that oh i mean hey just uh you know you know it's just dm me i try to answer as many of my platforms as i can you can always just hit me up on my instagram or you know even my facebook uh i'm actually working on getting a whole other website up for a bunch of other stuff that i'm doing on the side now because it's obviously getting a little harder to reach out to people without giving everyone my actual personal email which i don't want like most of the world to have because you know right, right. Is, you know but yeah so i'm just trying to actually get that dialed in it's a uh, it's kind of something that i just started doing you know since covid ended now that um you know i quit my actual job job to tour more i'm kind of figuring out that like self-employed when i'm off tour lifestyle so i'm kind of piecing it all together as i go between like the clothing brand and doing art stuff or vocal lessons etc oh so you do vocal lessons also awesome yeah yeah who yeah, it's, it's actually it's who, cool. who are you jamming let's go back to like high school days and you're you're in your car what cd almost just got burned up because you played it so much and like something that you would practice your voice to at maximum volume uh, what were you jamming back in the day uh definitely um they're only chasing safety by under oath for real that i probably played yeah. that a thousand times easily and the for extended sure. one has the uh the ten thousand crowbar song oh it's so good i know i, I that's we sounds... look so good <laughs> yeah it's good no it's it's good stuff i would say if it wasn't that album a close second would be like the first the used album yeah for real yeah i heard, always heard a rumor that the use got signed and they had never played a show live like how does that happen i mean i've heard i've heard way crazier stories what's the craziest story that you're referring to well I'm, i mean i've i've seen i've been, seen a lot of bands get um signed who, without ever playing a show that actually happens a lot you know sometimes it'll just be that right person's brainchild band or someone know someone who gets the demo and is like oh yeah like i want to mold this and they get the deal right out the gate you know stuff like that happens i mean consider some people i mean like make more on their own than anyone who's actually signed does because they just happen to like blow up on tiktok or something weird like that's the craziest shit i've seen it's like you can literally just make something in your bedroom put it on tiktok and it hits the right like wavelength you're all of a sudden it's it's crazy it's definitely not my favorite app and it's hard to navigate if you don't really like using it but it's definitely like a huge platform if you're trying to get seen i try to use tiktok but i just can't stand it so but i but i try i'm like oh I, today's I, I on our that. show it's, i have no good content though on there <laughs> it's it's like i feel like the best content that me or the guys come up with is when we're try not trying to you know, it'll just be like, oh, this is like some funny shit we got on video. Let's post this. That's usually how it happens for us. In Return of the Jedi. Oh my God, here we go. Yoda states how old he is. 
in the movie, how old does Yoda say he is? 900. 900 is correct! Give me a hell yeah! Had you gotten it wrong, we would have spun this wheel, but you got it right, so I'll do whatever it lands on. Oh, cool, it's gonna land on free reaction video. So I try to do like four or five reactions a day. Um, if you right. have any interest in me doing one for you, bro, I'll knock one out tomorrow. Maybe I should just do the newest track, right? White Rabbit's the newest video, correct? Yeah, yeah, do it, White Rabbit. White Rabbit's a good one, or Phantom Pain's another good one too. Oh, let's jam, let's jam Phantom Pain real quick, Phantom Pain. Do the song. So you hadn't done that prior to this? Phantom Pain was the first time we did that, yeah. Do you White consider rap. yourself a good rapper? Uh, no, because I don't actually do the rap. Okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, cool. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I would never consider myself to be good at anything until someone else said it first. Okay, for sure. It's another banger, dude. It's another Thanks, banger. Man. Hell yeah, I like, I like it a lot. Um. Is there is there a style of or genre that you guys haven't incorporated into your music yet that you're kind of just waiting until the right song for it to for it to go? I mean, I honestly feel like at some level we've incorporated everything that I want to, except some of it has just been in smaller doses where it's not as noticeable yet. But like, what song has been, what song has dubstep on it? I mean, I don't. I I guess. I don't tech. I would. I don't think that we technically have dubstep on anything, aside from maybe some like glitchy effects that might be reminiscent on like a breakdown here or there. But I don't think we have any dubstep. Not. I think it was something that was done a re really heavy-handedly for a while to where we wouldn't really know how to do it in a way that doesn't feel like it had been milked already. Okay. Yeah, right I, I feel you. You gotta keep it original. Can't, yeah, like, can't I, like, I would style. Love I'm always down to try anything different or anything cool, but like, if I'm like, I don't even really know how we'd make this any different from the last ten people who did it. It, I don't know if we should do it. You know what I mean? For sure. Um, do you play any video games? And if so, what game can you not put down right now? And what's like just the top three your favorite games ever made? Uh, um, I mean, right now I've just been playing uh, the Lego Star Wars on the Switch because that's like that's what I was playing on tour. Um, I did re down I did download um, the Force Unleashed. They like redid it for Switch. So there's like some new bosses and they added stuff to it. So I've been pretty much just playing Star Wars stuff on my Switch aside from Lego Star Wars. But uh, as for games of all time. That's pretty rough. I could say Final Fantasy VII is definitely the first one. It's the best. It's pretty hard to pick like the exact other two, but I feel like Spider-Man PS4 and like The Last of Us would be contenders at least. Good calls. Good calls for sure. Uh, a couple more questions and I'll let you go, man. This is a lot of fun though. Um, Absolutely. Just a couple more questions. Let's say you're you're for some reason the museum the history now nah, let's call it the museum of music it has every single album ever made it just okay. caught on fire for some reason you can only grab one album what is the one album you're saving because it's the best album ever made it can't be a greatest hits uh define the great line by under Earth. more than chasing safety oh yeah because it, it definitely has like a lot they went a lot darker on on yeah. that one but uh yeah it's, it, it, it's a great it, album i don't i don't really have i've never really been able to like define in like words why but define the great line i just feel like encapsulates everything that made me a metalcore musician like in one bubble in like an essence even if it's not the exact sound or whatever it was just the lyrics and the tone and the like you feel the weight of it it has like a, like you did, like you said, it's dark. It has like a darkness to it that you like can't unhear. Yeah, and no, I know I what like, you mean. I, yeah, and I've and I've really, it's it, I've aspired to do that with our music. When we have a, like we'll have lighter songs, but when we have a song that's about something heavy or really probing, we really don't hold back on it. You know what I mean? Like, we're not afraid to make people feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Because they relate too much. You know, and I think that's what's good <laughs> about my favorite bands. 
Oh, yeah. No, it totally makes sense. It is very, like, dark album compared to, uh, well, just compared to Chasing Safety, but I would say even the, I don't remember the name of it, but the Sun Sleeps album before Safety yep. was even somewhat darker. But anyway, um, uh, last question I got for you. I ask almost every guest this question. What is a piece of advice that you'd like to share with us regarding a band just starting up that, or a mistake you made early in your career that you did not want any band to make? But first, we've I've just been told we have to do a mandatory blah. Someone cashed in the points for a mandatory blah, so just one second. Little double blah for you, real quick. But uh, yeah, what's a piece of advice? That, the, the, <laughs> the double blah. <laughs> what's uh regarding the question? Piece of advice. Um, I would say, if if you're serious about what you're trying to do, like assuming this isn't just a for fun thing, make sure every single fucking person in the band wants it just as bad and is putting exactly the same amount of everything into it. I'd say that's one huge, big piece of advice. Don't do anything until you have that, if you're serious. And then as far as mistakes go, um, I don't care if it's your aunt or your best friend, get it in writing. Get it that's what? The biggest mistake. What? Get it in writing. Get whatever you do in writing. Get it in writing. Is there is there writing. is there an example of... Oh, without giving I away was, names or anything, like or family members, I mean, but... I'm not, I mean, I'm not here to like, you know, drag anyone, but we've had a, we had, you know, a music video that was like, it was supposed to be out and a month later we hadn't gotten the final copy back, you know, it's stuff like that. And it's because we didn't have it. It was a, it was a handshake deal because we had worked with the person and we liked them and we thought we could trust them. Right. But it's like, it doesn't really matter. You know, it's not a matter of trust. It's just a matter of like covering your investment and your assets. It's like, uh, no one should take it personally if you ask them to sign something. And if someone can't sign something legally binding them to do the job they agreed to do, they probably shouldn't be doing the job. Right. This makes you know? sense. So it makes like, sense. Yeah. You know, and that's, I'd say, the biggest mistake that we made was just like taking handshake deals. You know, so I would recommend bands don't do that. Don't do it. Don't you do it. Tyler, this was a lot of fun, man. Uh, guys, if you enjoyed listening to Saving Vice's music, uh, please hit the follow button for them. Support them. They're awesome. They're really busting their ass, and they deserve everything that's coming their way. Tyler, thank you so much. We appreciate it, man. Um, enjoy the rest of 2022. If I'll, I'll have that reaction for you tomorrow, dude. Uh, you're welcome back anytime, man. And just know that uh, you got to bring the hot sauce next time. But <laughs> no, absolutely, it's it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much for having me, dude. And uh, yeah, I like uh, I'll try to have something a little more cultured. I'm not I'm not gonna hate on Frank's, but I would have liked to have had something more impressive. It works, so. and you did a massive chug of it, which was amazing. But thanks so yeah. much, man. Tyler Peace out, of buddy. Saving Vice. Give me a hell yeah! Thanks, brother. I'm gonna.